Okay, now this section is just going to go over a little bit of the molecular reactions information. And what it was trying to say in that chapter is basically, if you imagine two atoms, let's call them A and B. These can be molecules, but we'll assume they're atoms for the minute. Now each one actually has a potential well, which if we draw like this and like that for A and for B, what we need to remember is that vertically we're getting an increase in energy. So basically at the top, when they're far apart, the only thing that's going to really be interacting, if we imagine, is all this energy up here, and that's a huge amount of energy, that. So what we actually want to, is basically to get this side here closer to that side there. So what we do is quite simply, we bring them together. And what this creates is an overlap of the energy wells. And basically, this creates, I'll just highlight this in red, a little energy hill, which that's the only energy hill they actually need to overcome to actually interact with each other. Now that seems really simple, and you're thinking, well, if you want a really low energy, why don't you just take one, get another, let's, let's put this in green just so we can see it, and put them directly over the top of each other because all you're actually doing there is just energy at that point which is the lowest energy you could have now that seemed a really good idea if it wasn't for the fact that if you remember from your atom you've got all these electrons going around but you have an actual nucleus and that doesn't budge, that doesn't do anything and that's positively charged so you can't just stick another one on top of each other because these are going to repel each other because they're likes but what will be happening is if you imagine the one next to it, these probably should be the same size. And the electrons here, that's negative, don't forget. Now, the electrons from here are going to be attracted to the nucleus there, and the electrons from that are going to be attracted to that there, the nucleus on that side. So basically, we go back to this diagram of what is an optimum between the repulsion of these two nuclei and the attraction of the opposite charges within these molecules. So this, going back to this little energy gap that we've got here, what we need to remember is that the closer we get them, the smaller the little hills are going to be, so there's less energy to interact. Whereas, obviously, if we can't get them very close together, there's going to be a lot more energy to interact like that. And so we might need to incorporate another form of assistance, maybe a catalyst or something like that, to actually help put these molecules together in a little bit better way. So that's the end.